is make yourself comfortable and enjoy our introduction to the Dark Ride Project. Our presentation, A Future for Art, will begin in one minute. This presentation will take approximately 15 minutes. If you do not wish to view the video at this time, we suggest that you do so at some point during your visit here. We hope this brief film will increase your understanding of the art presented for your appreciation. We would like to introduce you to Walter Hobbs, one of the world's foremost museum directors and authorities on contemporary art. By 1954, Walter Hobbs made art history by establishing with artist Ed Keenhouse, the Ferris Gallery in Los Angeles, as curator and then director of the Pasadena Museum, Walter Hobbs showed such events as Dukamp, Warhol, and Cornell before moving to Washington, D.C. in 1965 to study future museum concepts at the Institute for Policy Studies. He served as director of the Washington Gallery of Modern Art, the Corcoran Gallery of Art, and the curator of 20th Century Art at the National Collection of Fine Arts before becoming founding director of the highly acclaimed Menu Collection in Houston, recent projects have included retrospectives on artists Robert Ross Schenberg at the Guggenheim, Max Ernst at the MoMA, and Ed Keenholz at the Whitney. He has known and curated Rudd's art since the 1960s. Walter Hobbs discusses the Dark Ride project in a presentation titled A Future for Art. Welcome to A Future for Art. The future worth considering now emanates from an American artist named Eric Rudd. And the kind of future we're talking about, of which there could be many, myriad really, has to do with the place, occasion, where one experiences art, as well as the kind of art itself. About 200 years ago, a tradition we take for granted began, and that's called the Art Museum, or the Public Art Gallery. Conspicuously in France, at the end of the French Revolution, a palace was turned over to the citizenry, and the wonder months it had been, the private preserve of royal families heretofore, were open, on various, open in various ways to a public. In, the, in America, in the United States, an event happened as well. A painter, Charles Wilson Peale, who was, had broad interests in science and natural history as well as art, uh, opened what constitutes the first art school and the first public gallery for art in America, save those associated and with a much more restricted audience at Harvard University and Yale University in the north and at Williams and Mary College in the south. But in Philadelphia, a city of many innovations, not least of which was the Declaration of Independence and founding of our country, the Charles Wilson Peale Cabinet of Curiosities became a full-fledged museum. And we've known it over the last 200 years, essentially, as the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. I think it important to stress with this wonderful tradition of Peale's that although he was one of our founding fine artists, indeed, and sons and daughter and daughter-in-laws all involved with the arts, the family very much so, uh, at the end of the 18th century and beginning of the 19th. He had broad interests. The European elite tradition of collecting 
any number of scientific and naturally historical curiosities, zoological and botanical specimens, was part of his oeuvre. So there was a sense of innovation in Peel's work and an openness. Most museums we've had in America and around the world since have followed two traditions. Either they were the grand house thrown open to the public. When we visit New York City, we can visit what remains of, of the great financier Frick's home and see his collection, or a palace such as the Louvre thrown open to the public and filled with art treasures. And we've had this 200-year tradition of building false palaces and false great Renaissance homes that become the kind of design and shell for art museums. What's interesting that we are concerned with now is a curious tradition, a curious meld of traditions that Eric Rudd has worked out. He's working with electronic innovations of our time, robotics, virtual reality, sophisticated video equipment. He's also working with his own art in innovative materials, polyurethane foam and other plastics, uh, fabricated in exotic technical ways. But more to the point, he's considering a kind of union with the tradition of what in the amusement sector, a, a, a low cultural aspect of our society, the amusement parks, is called the dark ride. It's interesting that where we see the Disney enterprises involving all sorts of devices from the fine art world to work out their amusement parks, we have the first serious occasion of the reverse situation, where some of the techniques of the amusement park, as they've been known over the last 7,500 years, really, from the time of Barnum through the Disney world, uh, that those are being brought in at the service of the visual fine arts. So thus our adventure is to address what Eric Rudd has called the Dark Ride Project. An interesting and relevant heritage of Eric Rudd is his Russian family background. In two centers early in the 20th century, some extraordinary innovation in the ways art could both be made and experienced were developed. Uh, one in Russia, in old Russia, in St. Petersburg, uh, the city of Rudd's family origin, uh, gave rise to what we think of today as the Russian constructivists. Malevich, Rodchenko, Leranov, extraordinary people, both men and women, who shot ahead in terms of new techniques and, and methods in 20th century uh, technology available and material to conceive and fabricate many new forms in art and ways of seeing art. Of course, the other was the, uh, the Still Enterprise in Holland, in Amsterdam, and most famous of all, I guess thirdly, was the Bauhaus in Weimar and then Dessau, Germany for architects, designers, and visual artists, uh, artists of all types, worked for great synthesis. Moholy Nagy, a great Hungarian, conceived of, of ways of seeing art that anticipate, never realized, uh, that were almost like virtual reality theaters for experiencing art. Alas, the traumas that we center on the Russian Revolution and the Second World War disrupted the normal course of these great in, in innovative developments. One hopes that now in the latter part of 20th century, some of our new technologies in robotics, in virtual reality, uh, in the various ways that visual imagery can be recorded electronically, that some of what was dreamed early in our century uh, can come to fruition. Rudd's direction in art follows the grand development of abstraction in our century, which climaxed in the middle of the century with what are called the abstract expressionists in America, 
Uh, that's a manifestation that is echoed indeed around the world, from the Far East, even into uh, Russia today. Rudd's approach to an org organic kind of abstraction in painting and sculpture suddenly moved into a new realm with his use of polyurethane form, a totally malleable material that could then harden and given its light weight could practically, as opposed to cast steel or metals, or even fabricated cast or cast plastics, this foam material could assume very large, 20, 30, 40 foot elements uh, with light weight and an organic kind of malleability that was almost unheard of in other forms. Or recently he's worked in the very powerfully strong uh, polymer synthetic called Lexan that has a tensile strength that the urethane form does not. But fantastic organic shapes, the kind of, the kind of biomorphism that was l at the easel painting scale in the great Armenian American artist Arshil Gorky assumes heroic proportions when these new materials such as Rudd has employed uh, can be used. In the course of his career, Rudd began to conceive of building a set environment where a large scale aggregate of his sculptural works could be experienced in toto. The practicalities again of a individual artist taking over something the scale of a, a vast public botanic garden uh, or zoo uh, was impractical. And Rudd has conceived as a kind of private experience, an individual experience, a way of seeing in grand scale uh, his works. The derivation from the amusement park ride, when one would go through the tunnel of love or the chamber of terrors, as children are even adults that suspend our disbelief, in the darkness and in the space, we imagine far vaster space than is actually there. It becomes illusory, but very emotionally telling space. And Rudd's ingenuity has been such to work his art in tandem with these techniques and devices, those we call the dark ride, which of course uh, gains reinforcement in that it echoes our dreams and just going nowhere at night in our dreams we can travel through the millennia and of course that is part of the psychological effect that every amusement park uh, counts on and and reinforces. Rudd's innovations with the process or occasion to view the art that I've referred to as the his term, the Dark Ride Project, involves controlling the experience in certain ways to heighten it extraordinarily in others. Rudd has realized that a kind of, like, space helmet or, or visually uh, uh, occasioning or allowing helmet for the viewers can focus their attention and create effects uh, uh, unknown to many just wandering through in, and in an undirected way through an art museum. Further, he's developed a kind of robotic chair that the viewer can reside in and moves through the exhibit zones so that various dramatic effects or scenarios or occasions to see things in a preconceived order uh, are possible. So Rudd has been able to do this with his materials in an extraordinary way and on a, a human scale, a manageable scale, offers us this with the art at hand, the Dark Ride Project. project. This concludes our introduction, a future for art.
you can begin your visual voyage with a richer knowledge of the art presented. Now, it is time to experience the dark ride project. Boarding of the sensory integrator begins in the next chamber, where a dark ride project docent will help you. Enjoy the most adventurous art experience of your lives. Thank you for coming. Please, proceed to the next chamber carefully. Creative Travels.